Good morning. It's uh, 6.53 a.m. Wednesday, September 14th, 2016. Turn the speaker off on this thing. Um... There's some things I wanted to, <laughs> there's always something I want to mention, huh? Uh, Y'all are living in a very powerful, strong moment in uh, creation's history, especially that of this planet. It is the time of the awakening. It's the time of the change of format. For the earth, it's that and much more. I told you that you would uh, be seeing some fights and stuff going on, some issues, uh, you know, with starships, starcraft. Big stuff hasn't started yet, but it has started just the same. There's that um, <coughs> video I talked about already. Um, <coughs> in Hungary, uh, or Europe, uh, where a ship uh, tried to leave, tried to sneak out, and they couldn't. And it was uh, the people, almost everyone on the ship was saved. They were being out and taken care of. Most of them are on the way home. If they would have talked with uh, the authorities, the folks in charge being taken care of by the Antids, then uh, that never would have happened. There's a few people on that ship, less than 10, that couldn't get stopped and seen. They're, most of them are apprehended. Some of them went down with the ship. <laughs> Um, they knew what was in store for them, I guess. Don't really want to go there. <coughs> anyway, um, pretty soon the mass populace is going to have something shoved in their face. Life on other planets isn't only real, it's been all over us and with us for millions of years. How can somebody be so ignorant and, and unaware unless their thought process is like that and it's normal for them and there are people that have been abused in that manner. Those people should have extra you know, compassion uh, and extra attention to help them. If not, then I think we suck. Um, but uh, how can anyone be that ignorant to think that all the stars in the sky, that they have, most all of them have so many planets hanging around them, that there's not other life? How could someone be so arrogant to have the audacity to tell people aggressively that there's no life anywhere else? <laughs> to live in your own ignorance is one thing. To refuse to accept facts that point to your thought process being incorrect, to ignore that and to keep pushing forward that's stupidity and arrogance. That's something all of us can see around us every day. Folks, most planets 
have beings from other planets walking around on them. Some of them have their own life support mechanisms. Some, some of them uh, don't need it. Remember the bodies that live on a planet, the material in those bodies came from the planet because that's how the bodies were made so they could live on that planet. It is so simple. Folks, it is hard to fight trillions of years of planned ignorance, arrogance, and abuse. But it's something that needs to be dealt with. Big things will be handled, but look at, you know, little things as far as creation-wide, which is really big things because they're big to you, because it's about you and your life and those around you. That's stuff that has to be dealt with, and, and for each individual, that's a big thing. There's people who are afraid to admit there's life on other planets. There's people who refuse to believe it. They said, you know, uh, the three monkeys hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Some people just refuse to see anything. Of course, you always have your haters, too. Those people who are proud to look for a reason to make up their own little lies or their own thought conceptions uh, to slander to uh, throw their crap out everywhere um, look at their look at their names too I mean they some people they have nothing to do but to sit behind a computer and they feel big they feel bad when they um, actually uh, say something uh, make a comment on the computer they say yeah I'm tough I said this I'm going after the big boys it's so funny such little children you look at them and they're just little dweebs what's a dweeb a, a person who's so wrapped up in themselves that they are their own little world and their wants and desires literally constitute how they act about everything you know their selfishness It's amazing. They call him, they call himself Slaughterhouse or whatever, you know, Destroyer, Destroyer X Y Z. You know, it's like that's that's their names on the internet. I it doesn't bother me, and I hear about it from other people. It's, so what? Who cares? I have things handled pretty well where I don't have to deal with their crap and. I ask other people not to, you know, worry about it. Uh, a very good friend of mine, a long time ago, it, from his heart, said, Jay, you know, they're, they're saying this stuff. you got to repute it. And I said, are you kidding me? I said, number one, there'll be enough people saying that where I'm going to spend my whole day just throwing insults and comments back and forth. I mean, if I spent, waste all that time with these idiots... How am I going to literally get anything done? Why am I talking about this? Because, folks, you're awakening. You're becoming alive. You're understanding what's going on, and you're going to be fighting ignorance. Ignorance by itself is not bliss. Ignorance by itself is innocence. But once you've explained and removed the absence of data, knowledge, for someone to use for understanding, and they re they refuse it, then that's stupidity. Stupidity, arrogance, combination of things. I'm not trying to spend too much time talking on that. What I want to talk about is the fact that our friends on other planets are very real. Okay? I told you there's going to be firefights. I told you we're going to see them. It's only just barely kind of begun. It's just like a little. It's not even an appetizer. It's just 
little stuff you're starting to see. The other side is also doing this slowly. It's a whole lot less freaky when you see a couple of ships come in that have been damaged or an occasional little star starcraft uh, fight than when you see something large. Um, the Drock and the Antids are not alone in, in what they're doing. Um, there's a, a lot of folk that understand, I mean a lot of folk, you know, I'm talking about people, beings from other planets, that have learned about and respect by learning and understanding and seeing for themselves the honor and compassion of the Draconantids. They are the big brothers and sisters of creation, of this, of this physical creation, the third dimension. They're the ones that many people go to when there's a problem, but they tend to stay out of stuff as much as they can. Now, they're active because it's time. Things are changing. They know that. They understand that. They're helping with that. When I saw the foot soldiers actually running around, that was incredible. They're so big. They're so fast. And for their size, they're stealthy, but they have to, you know, literally do momentary beam in and outs, you know, move uh, subdimensionally to get through an area without tearing stuff up. <laughs> Folks are eight and nine foot tall. They're huge and powerful. For rept reptilian, re reptiles are incredibly powerful. Reptilian beings are very powerful. Drock. Folks, it's like the Anunnaki on super steroids. They're nuts. They could run in a small tree and knock it over and just keep going. It's amazing. Anyway, uh, we're a part of this. true they're real just like you are they will be living with us the vast majority of us will be happy to see them there's always your whoops there's always your hate mongers Herky's up I don't need to have that so close uh, well, he's laying down sleeping, but he already got up, got his, got, gave him his meds. Um, there's always hate mongers out there, you know. People who aren't happy and they want everyone else to suffer. <laughs> there's all kinds of reasons: control, thinking they're superior, better than. No such thing. Not for anyone. Not for anything. Nothing's any better than anything else. We can do things better than each other. I mean, these folks, as far as uh, technical abilities, come on, folks. These, these, these people have been around a long time. Okay? A long time. Trillions and trillions of years for a species. Some powerful stuff. These human bodies that we have right now go back about 750,000 years, I think, something like that. I'd have to get out my book to see. When I wrote that book, I had to sit down and relax and go inside the, go inside the field. It's just me. I have to go in there and just feel, get the information and come back. But you, I do it kind of naturally. It's just kind of weird. It's like flowing out of your body into yourself. Um, my head started something new. I just woke up this morning and uh, I couldn't stand to, to have my head touching the pillow. It feels better now, but while I was sleeping, I was looking at my head and changing and I'm seeing it 
literally imploding a little bit, like coming in. My head, my skull, maybe, sh whoa, shrinking. Um, <clears throat> that's what it felt like. I'll, I'll know what it physically feels like later. I don't need to have the brain science I used to. Almost all of me is out of the body, and I just, I do what I do, just uh, with basic thought process, because there's not much of me here anymore in this body. Um, I had the chance to talk with uh, Simon Parks and uh, his uh, awesome assistant, uh, Rebecca. Uh, she's, she's an awesome individual. She's got incredibly powerful uh, heart energy, and she's a seer too. She's got strong pineal, and Simon is very strong pineal, and he's got really good heart too. Uh, their solar plexus are fine, but you know, there's always something that's stronger than uh, the rest of it. Um, they're doing a, they're working their butts off right now, doing everything they can, but things are going to get kicked up a few notches for them soon. Um, I went into uh, Rebecca and cranked her up. Um, I'm doing whatever I can, man. <clears throat> anyway, uh, uh, so does Simon and uh, Rebecca. They work hard. I've known Simon so long. I've known all of you, you know. I make a joke about calling myself the old man of the old fart. Well, there's a reason for that. I've been around since the beginning of, you know, when everything was being split up. Anyway, um, I just want to put something out there. Uh, for you to consider what it's like on some other planets with all these other beings out there everywhere if you you can relax if you can relax and get set your mind up where it needs to be to relax um, every time I um, go into you and I give you uh, you know an ICU intensive crank up uh, every time I go in you and do that I teach you, part of it is teaching you how to relax and feel, open yourself up to feel and become yourself. It's like relaxing and opening up and then your frequencies all slow down, soften, your uh, um, DNA relaxes um, as you reach in, into yourself and try and feel what's going on inside you. It actually, let me change that, It's if when you open yourself to whatever it is that you do feel, when I'm doing this, you're receptive and when you get no oh, my neighbors in the attic are getting a little nuts um, when you do that uh, you're setting yourself up where you need to be uh, so you can literally talk spirit guides go wherever you want you can go into the field and just literally pretty much go anywhere you want get information um, the Akashic Records, what they call that. Folks, it's information that's within the field. It's floating database that's everywhere. It's not an actual location. It's everywhere. It's part of the field. The field is what Greg Braden said, an intelligent being, so to speak. <coughs> it's part era hanging out there, okay? It's everywhere. When you go to Astral Project, you go through it. You go in it, it's like an escalator that goes fast. You go, you crank up your energy, it comes to meet you, and then poof, takes you. How do you think you actually project across the universe and back in about 9, 10 seconds? <laughs> you don't have to have an incredibly huge power level. It's done for you. Heart energy is so powerful. Um, I wish I could have had more time. Uh, with uh, Simon and Rebecca yesterday, I would have liked to have taken them out to a um, space station that's out around Jupiter. <coughs> Excuse
excuse me, uh, closer to Saturn, I should say, but it's moving closer to Jupiter now. Huh, the Drock energy field's been moved in. It's changed. They've decreased the size, but it's stronger. Good boy, Herky. Um, anyway, that's so that's literally just feeling, seeing stuff through the field, folks. It's a tool. They're waiting on you. I mean, it, it's there to be, but it, you know, anytime you want, you just go right in it. There's so much that's going to change. But the first thing is to at least get the mass populace to understand his life on other planets. There's one male up in the attic making noise. Uh, animal. And he weighs about 45 pounds, 40 pounds. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, uh, um, all my visitors are welcome. This property is like sanctuary. I made that a point a long time ago. That's why it's so important for me to keep it. Belongs to the planet, no one else. Anyway, uh, uh, if you relax, calm yourself down, just open yourself up, and then, well, don't do this mantra stuff. Just relax and feel yourself, allow yourself to float out of your body and everywhere into the field. You make the intention of releasing yourself and being in the field. Folks, you will do this. You will do this. And then once you're in the field, once you realize you're in the field, you'll feel it, you feel loose, floating. Literally go to another planet. Go to the space station that's near Saturn. They'd love some company. Go to Saturn, Jupiter, whatever. It went, came back to Jupiter again. Thank you. Um, sorry. It wasn't... It was it went near Saturn, but it is close to Jupiter now. Um, you can go there, and you can start seeing some of the people there. Folks, you all have a lot of... You don't have to, but most all of you to listen to me. You know, some of you want to know a little bit about what's going on. I mean, know what's going on in space and stuff. Good. But, uh, um learn how to relax and float up there you can see him yourself the hard part is believing what you're seeing but if you see something and you never saw it on TV where you try to make an image how the hell did you make it up you didn't you saw it it's image you go see it uh, it's in this dimension okay you're gonna be using the scanner right here it has more high definition than a pineal. You just got to get into that relax mode. Open up. You have to take yourself and put yourself into the field. You have to release yourself from your body. You have to say okay. And let go. And then take off. But you have to let go. You, you'll never take off. Okay. Um... We have so many fears, so many issues in our personal and private lives <clears throat> that it's really, really hard to do that. <coughs> folks, folks, you have more free will. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you have more free will right now than you've ever had in your life. There's still issues over there on the other side, okay? Things are still nutty. But you have more free will. You have more ability to open up and do what you want within your body than you've ever had before. Um, 
that reminds me. Um, those people that, that had the uh, class, the metaphysical brain class with me, uh, this is something for all of you. That's just releasing your energy so it can do what um, <coughs> what it needs to. It only takes a second. It's um, kind of funny when I when I go into people and crank them up, give them the free energy work that comes along with the consult. Um, I get them to put their hands out over their head and then bring it close until they start feeling their aura. And I'll watch them. I'm looking. So I can see already see where it is. And if they go too too far up, too far below or anything, I'll wait. And then when they keep going back and forth, I'll say, okay, just relax. And I'll let it go up. And then uh, they'll start moving down. I'll say, let me know when you when, let me know when you feel some heat in your palms or your fingers tingle or whatever. And then they'll get to right around where the ore is, and then they go back up a little bit. And you know, they're finding it. Um, on once they found it and they feel it, if it's an inch above their hands, I'll tell them that. If it's an inch below their hands, I'll tell them that. But I don't tell them, you know, unless they just can't feel it at all. Um, I don't tell them and honestly that hasn't happened yet uh, but anyway I get them to feel their aura beforehand and then after cranking them up then I get them to feel it again and then they feel it up here and I'll watch to make sure that they're getting it right um, and then the last thing um, it takes once I do that it takes seconds to do just like I just did it takes seconds and then they feel it, and then usually they, you know, usually the, they their hands are outside of their aura. Not always; it depends on the person. Uh, the more you wake up, the stronger your aura comes out of you. Okay, the more you power up, uh, the stronger you get. The more energy you have inside you, the higher it gets. It's not just higher; it comes out everywhere. Folks, the stronger you get, you can telepathically communicate with our friends in space. My friend Stephen Levendusky, he's awesome. He's uh, one of my kids, so to speak. He's Source uh, from Lily and Ara. <coughs> he and I are, you know, tied. I, I wish it, it was closer, but, you know, it's, I got too much to do, and he understands. I got to do a lot of stuff to help him, but I need to do 99% of that when I get out of the body. Um, he's an incredibly powerful telepath and when I first met him he said Jay I, I want to I tell him you need to get out of that area he goes Jay I can't I won't be able to talk with all the grays and every, everything and the reptilians that are stuck in the Air Force Base in New Jersey and I said yes you can I said you know I said you don't understand I said you're stronger than they are and he goes, no, 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 they're telling me that, you know, if I move away, that uh, um, they won't be able to, uh, <coughs> that they won't be able to, um, uh, that I won't be able to communicate with them. And I said, that's not true. I said, that's a lie. Um, I said, the thing is, they're prisoners, okay? They're locked in there. You're like an outlet for them to communicate with someone outside of the prison, so you give them something that's very powerful, you know, for them, you know, to help them. I mean, come on, being a prisoner locked up, that's insanity. So um, then uh, it took a little time and I finally got tired of it and I took him with, took him with me. But what it is, I told him where to go when I'm actually just right next to him watching him. And next thing you know, he's running around the space station. He's looking at stuff, seeing stuff and... Then uh, he's going through, we see this, and then he's going around the hall, and the folks over there, remember, most of these older races, they've learned how to use their abilities, right? He's floating through the hall, I'm with them, and they're just watching other people turn around, what, you know, look, uh, folks, some of these bodies really look different uh, to us funny, just the way we look funny to them. Um, to a lot of beings, we look like soft, gushy things. Um... It's really cool when you think about it. 
But folks, all of you can do that. You just relax, go into the field, and, and you can fly around wherever you want. Now, Steve, Steve is strong. He's an incredibly powerful telepath. Um, but when he finally realized he was doing that himself, that freed him from thinking he had to stay in that one location. Okay? The Sapoian, uh, you know, Grace, as they're often called, and the uh, uh, Anunnaki prisoners and the others um, in New Jersey, they'll be freed soon. They're coming out. So is everything else that's prisoner on the planet. But, um, now that Steve understood something, saw it for himself, he has his own truth, and now he's, he, he can go anywhere. He still talks with them all the time. You know, I, I go down there every once in a while, too. It hurts me to go there. It's sad. It's my, my, one of my promises is to get all of them out of there. And I haven't fulfilled that. And it just... That and releasing the animals from their... The rest of the animals from their bodies. That hasn't been done either. And that's, those are my two biggest promises. Is what I am as spirit. Having all the memories of the very first life had with Lily and Era. Um, I have a bit of a guilt trip that things went this long but the thing I have to deal with is what I have in front of me that's why I'm so anxious to get home and then they keep changing stuff on the other side one moment I'm seeing myself being able to get free and then it goes back and forth and I said man y'all are just you know really messing me up here um There's a part of Lily and Arrow over there that know what they're doing and they're doing the best they can to get stuff done. It's a big mess over there. It's about not to be, though. Anyway, uh, like most of my videos, they, they move around to a lot of different uh, thought processes and areas. Um, good. Um, it's harder for someone who's a researcher just to get a little bit of information, think what they want, and go. Um, but there's more to you becoming yourself than just accessing a piece of information you want. Um, reading 10 pages in a book instead of the whole 400. Um, you're not really going to understand or get the most out of the data that you go after that you got in that 10 pages. But um, don't, folks, uh, don't let people badmouth you. I mean, I mean, you know, they will, but don't let it bother you. You know, if it's in person, just tell them to go jump in a lake, you know. Um, but you have to wonder why they feel the need to <laughs> to be that way. Just it's insecurity. Sometimes it's uh, just blatant arrogance, and uh, uh, some of them are negative. Someone's thirty-seven percent negative. They're going to be tend to be more like that, uh, like uh, uh, Randy James. That's what he is. Um, anyway. Don't be afraid to be a pioneer. Never hesitate to be yourself. If you're not yourself, who the hell are you? A puppet for someone else? Are you trying to do things for other people where, as they say and everything, let them control you so that you're what? An extension of them? Those people are usually quite confused, but they're always arrogant and selfish. Um, if you're letting someone do that to you, it's usually because you've been beat up to, you know, through life to be that way. You have to put your feet down the ground and stop. And realize your self-worth. 
there's no one any better than you. Period. People think so. The problem's theirs. Leave it any way you can. Um, when people have no one to scream at, they'll start doing, you know, just going crazy screaming about nothing to scream at. Uh, you know, there's, they're kind of like that. They're not here for anything other than uh, selfish uh, reasons. They, you know, they say something is this way or that way or this person's wrong. When they find out that person's right, then they just make up an excuse, blow it off, and then go to something else. They, you know, it's they're always going to be there, folks. Don't let that stop you. Don't let that slow you down. It's time for you to feel yourself, awaken to yourself. But when when you do that, there's not two handrails to hold on to. It's metaphysical, not physical. They can't see. They're running their mouths about whatever. They want to be known as, they want to be seen with the image of power, or control. Whatever. You know, that's kind of a joke. Um, I don't want that to slow you down in becoming yourself and being able to see and understand what's about to happen. These folks in space look different, or from space, as we would think they're from other planets in space. Some of them do live in space. Uh, they look different. Be ready for that. Um, different mannerisms and everything else, but folks, most of you had, have had lives in most of their bodies. So, uh, try to keep that in mind they're just us from a different house and the stronger you come the more you awaken the more you're going to draw people towards you or they'll be sent to you for your help in awakening creation has gone family not everyone has to sit down at the table at the same time and uh, agree with everyone what families like that? If if there is, then you have a mom and dad at the head of the table, or head and tail of the table, you know, aggressively controlling everything instead of letting people talk. Anyway, folks, love you. Um, this stuff is happening. You're going to see it more and more, and eventually they'll be walking around here. You say freak out at first, and then you say, hey, this is neat, you know. Love you folks, have a good one.